In the Coco main event, also in the Bantamweight division, Sean O'Malley defeated Piotr Jan by split decision, earning a 29-28 on two of the judges' scorecards. Piotr Jan earning his own 29-28. Mark, let me start with you. First and foremost, do you think Sean O'Malley is the rightful winner of this contest? How did you score it and your thoughts on the fight overall? Yeah, it's a shame that the only thing people want to talk about when it comes to this fight is how controversial the result was. And it's a shame for three different reasons. Number one, Sean O'Malley arrived on Saturday. He went to war with the guy ranked number one in the division, took it to him, hurt him multiple times, showed heart. He looked like he every bit of belonged at, at the top. Number two. That fight was incredible. That thing was an absolute war. It had ups and downs in every direction, huge spots, huge moments for each guy. Both guys had to dig deep. It was back and forth, and I appreciate the show they put on. Number three, Sean O'Malley won the fight. (laughs) Wow. That result was right. I wasn't sure live. Round one ended live, and I said, man, that was close. I think maybe Jan got it. Then, of course, I gave round two to Jan. I gave round three to O'Malley. On the rewatch, Sean O'Malley won that fight. I know there's probably a lot of you listening right now who scored this fight for Jan live who are pissed hearing me say this right now. I'll I'll hear in a minute what you guys thought. I don't know if you have rewatched. As I said, live, I kind of thought it went Jan's way also. On the rewatch, I I, I already thought Sean won round three. I thought he won it even more clearly on, on the rewatch. Round one, I had Sean ahead by a pretty clear margin at the time of the takedown, and Jan didn't do a ton with it. It was a nice takedown. He landed maybe three good strikes on the mat. Sean gets up. By my card, maybe Jan had kind of just tied it up as they stood, and then Sean O'Malley wins all of the final 40 seconds of round one. So as much as I was surprised rewatching the thing, I think Sean definitely won round one and and, uh, round three. So Wow. We'll hear what you guys think. But for me, it sucks for Sean that he did this, in my opinion, and he's getting knocked so much for it. I mean, you go on social media, every post about this fight is 100 people saying it was bullshit and whatever. Um, but I, I was impressed. He, Sean O'Malley's movement, his change of direction, his switching stances, his length, and the way he just mixed up his strikes. It's all stuff that we've seen from him before. But to see him do it against a guy like Piotr Jan... It's like, wow, all this is real. And he gave Jan trouble from the jump. Of course, Jan adjusted like the stud that he is. Sean readjusted himself. And on top of that, I've heard a lot of people say, like, oh, man, Sean O'Malley's ground game is trash. Like, look what Jan was able to do to him in terms of bringing him down. What's he ever going to do against Aljo, blah, blah, blah. And I get it. Aljo will be a tough matchup. But, like, Sean O'Malley got up off the ground four times. The only time he didn't get up was the one where he got taken down close to the round inning. Every other time, he got up. And if it wasn't for those get-ups, we're not even having this conversation because he clearly loses that fight. He got up four times, and the get-ups off the ground are what allowed him to win. So that ability is not something to be knocked necessarily. And he also stuffed some takedowns late in that fight that that were big too. So I left impressed by Sean. I I saw a lot from him in this one, and um, I am happy to learn that he is this good because the Sean O'Malley experience is going to be fun. Omar, what was your score? I have not rewatched the fight. Uh, watching the fight live, I did have Jan winning one and two, uh, and then I had O'Malley winning three. Even live, I wasn't dying on either hill. That fight was close. The fight felt close. The only round I thought that was 100% clear without any dispute was round two for Jan. Um, but round one and round three... I think arguments could be made for both, frankly. Um, I would want to watch it, I guess, again now at this point after hearing Mark kind of describe what he saw. Um, but I guess, to be honest, while I was watching that fight, I was I was enjoying the fight for what it was because it was nice to see O'Malley rise to the occasion. Um, it was nice to see O'Malley fight somebody who complete a fight with somebody who wasn't a punching bag. Um, somebody who did give him, you know, some adversity. We saw Sean O'Malley finally get rocked 
which came right after he basically rocked Jan. Yeah, it's a real back and forth going on. Um, it was a beautiful fight, man. I, I loved every minute of it. There was excitement yeah. from beginning to end. The accuracy on O'Malley is is absolutely stupid. stupid. Um, it reminds me of Conor McGregor. I, I, I don't want to, you know, do this Sean O'Malley and Conor McGregor comparison because that's we're not even – I'm not doing that. What I am going to say, though, is the accuracy, specifically the accuracy with the punches – reminds me of conor mcgregor there is a length that sean o'malley has when he throws those punches and an accuracy with where those fists actually touch on the face that is not something you see every day even in the higher weight or even in the um the elite stages of the ufc or, or mma in general um so i took a lot of things away from that fight both on Jan's side and both on on, on o'malley's side Jan is a dog um Jan is absolutely a dog, and I think he showed that even if, you know, when he was getting tagged up, that he has other facets to his game. Granted, he's not, you know, ground and pounding people to hell. He's not Aljamain Sterling, but if he needs to switch it up, he can. And I thought his wrestling was actually pretty effective uh, for what he was able to do, nullifying a lot of uh, O'Malley's game. Um, but again, O'Malley was able to get back up, and those, those get-ups are fucking hard, and they're exhausting. And he got up multiple times. And not only did he get up, he went right back to work as soon as he got back up. Yep. So there was a lot of great things that came out of that fight. That fight was was very, very exciting from beginning to end. Um, I understand if you were rooting for somebody that didn't win, why you feel the way you feel. It was a close-ass fight. Hmm. But this is another one of those things where we have got to stop calling it a robbery. Thank it was you. not a robbery. Thank you. I, it was a I close, fight. It was a close fight. Yes. It's exactly what it was. It was a close fight. Um, for transparency's sake, every single media personality has Jan winning. Yep. Like yep. everyone. There's one dude, one There's lone one. dude from yep. MMA Junkie yep. who voted for O'Malley. The peoples in the MMA's world about 3,000 scorecards have been submitted for this fight. Jan has round one with 65%, and O'Malley has it with 32%. So a lot of people live, I'm assuming, saw it for Jan right off the bat for round one. Jan round two, 94%. Like I said, round two was the one that no one, that's not, a, that's not up for discussion. Round three, O'Malley has round three at 55.5%. Jan Which has is it baffling two point two percent. I would love for someone to explain to me how Jan won round three because he didn't. He was like I said, their their round one and round three were the closest rounds, and they were close rounds. Okay, I need you to promise me this. So first of all, I want to point out all those scores that have made decisions are live scores. All those come live. Those are scores that are that are submitted live on websites as the pay per view is happening. And as I said, live, I thought Jan won too. I want you to rewatch this fight. If you need my login for the pay-per-view, because you didn't buy the pay-per-view, right? I will give it to you. By next week, I want to hear how you score this fight. And I'm very curious if you agree with me. And any viewers, I again, I've said this before on the show. If you haven't watched it a second time, I don't want to read your comment. Don't leave me a comment. If you have watched it a second time and you have points to make of why you disagree with me, I am happy to discuss. A lot of it comes down to how one scores or regards a takedown in which the person on top doesn't do much, in air quotes, doesn't do much with. And that's, what, it, that's kind of what happened. Modern it, day it, MMA scoring, we are not supposed to score it so heavily. I think it's not only just that you don't score it a certain way or that it's scored heavily, but if... if the person who's gotten taken down doesn't do shit either, then you're left with the person on top winning. But O'Malley never really let himself be that person on bottom where he was just accepting the position. At all times, that kid was moving to the cage, getting his ass up, getting out of the clinch, and we're back. Like, like Mark said, the one time he was really stuck on bottom was at the end of round one. That was the biggest moment of the takedown game that we saw throughout the entire fight round two, every round other time two. he got taken was it round two? And oh, round two right yeah. right 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 the whole round two um 
but he was able to get he was able to get himself up in those moments in round one and round three to make it so that those those takedowns don't hold as much value compared to the rest of the round. Yep. Okay, let's talk about right. where these two elite bantamweights go after this fight. Let's start with the winner, Sean O'Malley, Omar. <clears throat> Looking at the landscape of bantamweight, do you think Sean O'Malley? Needs to fight somebody else before he gets a title shot, or do you think he's he's more deserving than Volkanovski right now? I I would I would argue Volkanovski definitely deserves a huge fight like this. It would more Wait, be Volkanovski. Well, because Volkanovski is the one. Oh who's... no, Volkanovski's. So oh, Volkanovski. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I mean, it's like Volkanovski. Yeah. Omar's just trying to get his brain to connect to the, yeah. the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, my Cejudo, bad. Cejudo. Um, I would think that Aljamain is more deserving of a larger fight than Cejudo is at this point. Um, but with that being said, the fight that I think I would really want to see in the meantime, because we already know that Aljamain is booked, is Sean O'Malley versus uh, Chito Vera. I think now is the perfect time to get that rematch. They're both in yeah. beautiful positions yeah. right at the top five of the of – the, uh, bantamweight division i think at this point we can see them at the top tier of their uh, of their skill and we can really get to see who the number one contender is from there oh man. couldn't agree more if neither cheeto or o'malley is getting that title fight let's do it it's the perfect time i'm certainly keeping o'malley away from marab if i'm the ufc that's the last thing i want to be booking so o'malley and cheeto man it's, I think it's perfect time to pull the trigger. The story is there. As Omar said, they're both at their absolute peaks right now. It's a huge fight. That could easily co-main a pay-per-view. I wish it would be made five rounds, to be honest, but uh, that, that's where I'm going for sure. Yeah. I mean, it could only be more perfect if one of them had, had a belt. Yeah. So, yeah. it was When those two guys fought, given the, uh, how that fight went down, for those who don't know or, may, or might not uh, remember that well, uh, Chito Vera landed a, a calf kick that hit O'Malley pretty much on the side of the knee. And it, it kind of like turned his nerve off in his leg. Same thing happened to Michael Chandler in a fight in Bellator. Uh, and he immediately started, not immediately, he kind of gradually more and more throughout the round started like tripping and like rolling his ankle because basically like his foot like fell asleep. And he got finished. Uh, so it was kind of a controversial ending because it was it was a question of how much credit do you give Chito Vera because it happened because of his kick, yeah. but it's kind of a kind of an atypical thing that happens from a kick. Uh, so, you know, there was a lot of heat going into that fight between those two guys, and coming out of that fight, it was like, man, would love to see those two guys match up again one day. You know, maybe if both of them reach the the upper echelon of 135 pounds. And here we are, baby. That absolutely is the fight to make. I agree with both of you. Let's uh, let's talk about Piotr. Excuse me, Piotr Jan for a moment. Um, he has uh, flirted with the idea of, of like leaving the UFC. Yeah, wild. Which wild. is silly because the UFC doesn't control the judges. Yeah. So yeah, that he's, aside, he's so it's it's actually I've seen kind of corrections to these reports that it's not necessarily leaving the UFC. It's like leaving the sport that he's flirted with just being like, I'm done with it. Oh, wow. That's silly. But yeah, uh, he's I mean, emotional. Let... He's emotional. He, he feels like he got robbed and I can, I get that. I mean, it's not like I'm going to be Peter, you know, Peter Jan and being like, well, no, that was a close decision. No, like, you know, he probably felt like he won in there. He knows he, he knows what he did in there and he just probably feels like it's enough. And this is the second decision. I think he ends up getting, shafted for for you know for he fucking work. lost to aljo stop it <laughs> he, um you yeah. piotr jan he did not lose that fight the second fight yeah I'm if you ask a lot, lot of people don't think he lost the second fight it's crazy. wow yeah um so i've i've said this matchup before i still love it I know now Jan's lost two in a row. Maybe it doesn't make quite as much sense, but I really want to see Jan versus Marab. I love the matchup. I love Jan fighting against um, Aljo's team again. There's obviously some pre-existing beef there, even though it seems like these days they have kind of pieced things up. 
but book the fight probably ramps right back up again. So give me that one. And, um, you know, it's almost like, obviously it's still a huge fight from Rob to, to have a shot against Jan. And it's almost like for Jan, it's like, all right, we hear you. This is a huge opportunity. You beat Marab, you're still right there. So I, I think it's perfect. Omar, any other names you want to throw out there? Uh, I think Marab is the perfect one, to be honest. Stylistically, I think it's super interesting because Marab is sort of like... They're, they're both, I want to say, very similar fighters. But just Piotr is just more of a stand-up fighter and Marab is more of a ground fighter. But they're both equally as insane in their respective fields of, of expertise. Um, so I think it'll be very interesting to see how that, how that matches up. Um, separately, if Piotr Jan were to leave MMA, specifically MMA, I would kind of love to watch him in one in, in the Muay Thai game. I mm-hmm. think that'd be dope. Sure. Just saying. That would be cool. That would be cool. That would be kind of surreal to see him there. The only problem with these bookings is if it's Al Joseph Hudo, O'Malley Cheeto, Jan Marab, of course Sanhagen kind of gets fucked. There's like no one for him yeah. to fight, but there's like seven guys in this mix right now, so hey, man. someone's getting fucked. Arguably the best division in the sport right now. Uh, let's move on, guys. Uh, congrats to Sean O'Malley, man. Biggest win of his fucking life. 